Yep, it's Sunday in the park. Wait a minute, let me just turn off my music. I think my music is off. Can everybody hear me? I hope you can hear me. It's Sunday in the park with Alex. <laughs> yeah, if we, uh, let me see here. Is there any way, well, I guess I don't know where I can turn this uh, around. Oh, there it is, okay. We're here in the park. Uh, this is uh, the park about uh, about four blocks from me, and it's really nice. There's a pond down there. Uh, it's a pretty large park, actually. It's a very nice park. This is not the one I usually go to. Usually, when you see me, uh, I um, can uh, usually when you can see when you see me doing these things, I'm in the uh, Harlem Mere which is this big, giant lake, man-made lake down that way. Okay, you can't see where I'm pointing. Uh, by the way, all of you who are watching, can you hear me okay? Because I, I wonder about this because my earphones are... Uh, um, anyway, Carter, tell me, am I, am I, can you hear me? Okay, anyway. It's funny, I do these little things in the park, and where, I don't know, I get a couple hundred people watch the ramble, and, Maybe about 500 who watched the Monday show. I, I got almost 600 viewers just in my last video of this. You know, without any publicity or anything like that. So, uh, it's always amazing to me. But I think of these as a time when I can suddenly vent about what I've heard on the news or what's bothered me on the news. And what's bothered me on the news lately is what's bothering all of you. And that's, uh, that's about the guns and about people getting shot. You know, if I were a parent today, I would be afraid to send my kid to school. The chances of a random shooter coming in and shooting up my kid's class are, I, I guess, I could probably have almost as good a chance of winning the lottery. But even with that knowledge, still, it can happen. And the fact that it can happen at all, and that it seems to be a trend, it seems to almost be a fad, it just is, I, I can't imagine being a parent right now. And when your kid goes, I don't want to go to school because somebody could come in and shoot me. There's no way you can tell that kid, hey, don't worry. It's not going to happen to you. It happens to other people. But these things always happen to other people, okay? They always happen to other people. And uh, they, you don't think they're ever going to happen to you. And all those parents who lived in Texas... Sent their kids to school every day. Didn't even think that sort of thing could happen. But all it takes is one lone gunman to come along and do it. And the question now becomes, what do we do about the guns? Well, I'm saying take away at least the assault rifles, okay? All the he heavy ammunition. And just let people own pistols. And, uh, and not high-powered pistols, just pistols. If we're going to even allow them to have that. I mean, you know, these people are always saying, well, we need a pistol for protection. Protection against what? Okay? Protection against who? Uh, protection against somebody who's going to break into your house and now you've got a pistol and he comes into the house just to rob it and doesn't have a pistol, but now he sees you and wrestles the pistol from your hand and shoots you with your own gun? Now you're going to say, oh, Alex, you're, yeah, that doesn't happen. That happens more often than not. Usually, people are killed with their own weapons. Uh, I've also looked at, uh, I saw a thing in the New York Times, and they listed all the events since Columbine of mass shootings. And what would you think a great majority, I'd say at least 40% of the people, how they got their guns? They stole them. Okay. So you say, well, if we make those certain guns illegal, how's that going to stop him from, he doesn't have to buy one, he can just steal one. Well, if you don't have them out there, there's nothing to steal like that. And, and believe it or not, pistols are a, little less le a lot less lethal than a guy who comes in with a fully magazine uh, AR-15 and starts shooting up the room randomly. If he doesn't even go to hit anybody, he's going to kill several people just in doing that. So what's the answer? Well, the answer is we got to do away with at least the assault rifles. And you say, well, 
But that's against the Constitution. People have a right to bear arms. Well, we can argue what the amendment, amendment meant by in order to maintain a well-ordered militia, and we can argue that for weeks. But what you can't argue, and it's what most uh, jurists and uh, especially members of the Supreme Court take into effect, is that uh, the law, how was the law intended when it was written? And the intention of the, that, the Second Amendment at that time did not include things like AR-15s because they didn't exist. Basically, all they really probably were covering were muskets with, you know, little balls you had to put in them. And one at a time you shot them because you had to it first put the powder in, then you had to put in the ball, and then you had to shoot the musket or the firearm. So that was what, those were the kind of arms they were talking about. If you had told them then, well, you know, someday they're going to have these high-powered rifles with magazines that can shoot 100 rounds in a minute or something like that, uh, the framers of the Constitution would have at least made an exception there and said, the firearms are to be described as single pistols or whatever. But the, 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 the intent of the, of the people who wrote that law, number one, was to prevent a foreign government from coming in and taking over. And since we didn't have an army, but we did have militias, they wanted to cover that. And I understand that. But it wasn't meant that you got to have a gun so that you could uh, put it by in a holster by your side and walk down the street, and if somebody came at you in a menacing manner, pull it out, kill them, and be able to get away with it. So it's time for us to do away with those firearms, okay? That kind of firearm. That's, that's a beginning. And that's what people will steal, and that's what people will try and get. And if they've got just a single-shot pistol, it's a little harder for them to do the mass killing that's been done in these, these events. But anyway, it, and then it bothers me that you've got some goddamn Republicans uh, and and a few Democrats too, who just believe, oh well, we 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 can't do, do away with that right. Well, you know, the two states where there's been a mass casualty killing lately have been the two states that did away with any and all arms regulation, where you just walk into a gun store, buy an AR-15, and walk out, no checks. Uh, you probably don't even put down, have to put down your real name. And it was in these two states that immediately we had mass casualties. So think about that for a while. Uh, you know, I, I just, it, and if I want to own an atom bomb, can I do that? Is that considered a fi uh, uh, arms? It is, basically. I mean, do I have a right to a nuclear weapon? Who knows? Who cares? I don't. Anyway, well, there'll be more killing. There'll be more deaths. I'm, I'm 82 years old. I don't know how much longer I have to live, but a lot of you are going to have to live a lot longer than me, and you're going to see more mass shootings. You're going to see more of this kind of stuff going on because our jurists in Washington, D.C. are just like going, my dick's bigger than your dick. And no, I'm not going to do that because I just don't want to do that I'm a Republican, the Democrats want that. I'm a Democrat, no, the Republicans want that. You know, good ideas are good ideas, bad ideas are bad ideas, and that's how you should vote. But what am I going to say? What else been happening? Oh, yeah, of course, Amber Heard, Johnny Depp. I, the last time I did one of these, I talked about it. And uh, I know a lot of you consider that trivial. Okay, I wouldn't watch that trial because it's trivial. Well, I watched it because I wanted to hear her talk about how Johnny uh, shoved a, uh, um, a bottle up her pussy, you know, and, and for him to say, no, I didn't. But she then shot, you know, uh, threw a bottle at me and cut off the top of my finger and on and on and on and on. And we, we watched it. It was good, cheap television. It was, it was better than watching some devised drama about the same thing, right? And then when it was all over and the verdict came in, I looked at Marjorie and I went, you know, for as trivial as this thing has been while it's been going on, the verdict is profound. And how it's profound is it's saying, hey, you know, stop it with this, the guy is always wrong bit. You know, we always talk about how, oh, women can't say they were raped because they won't be believed. Well, today a guy can be accused of rape 
And if he says he didn't, he won't be believed. All right? Now, truth is truth. I, I, and I don't think that just because you're a, a woman, you know, that you don't have the ability to lie. And just because you're a guy, you don't have the ability to tell the truth. You know, and that I don't like to see a society where a woman can simply accuse a guy of something, like Amber did with Johnny Depp. I know her personally, so I call her Amber. No, I don't. Uh, uh, but that that a jury said, hey, you know, defamation is defamation, and if he didn't do this stuff, you're lying, and lying is is defamation, you know. And it hurt his career, and uh, you got to pay up. And the, the woman didn't win in this case. And I think that's a wonderful, not uh, a win for men, but a win for us, for people, who in any case might be accused of something, and then just flagrantly, and then they don't, you don't work anymore. I mean, there are people today who have been accused of stuff, and they've lost their job. And uh, I don't think they have the lawyers to be able to go in and do a defamation suit. But I just think that it was a very profound verdict with profound implications. And a lesson to everybody that the guy doesn't always lie. And from everything I heard about Johnny Depp, he actually was a pretty nice guy with the women he knew. I mean, Kate Moss testified that he was wonderful, basically. She came to the trial and said, I fell down a flight of stairs. That's the flight of stairs that Amber Heard thinks I was pushed down. But I fell down a flight of stairs, and I was yelling, and, I, and Johnny was walking ahead of me, turned around, immediately ran up, grabbed me, took me in his arms, and what, took me upstairs and laid me in bed and called the doctor to make sure I wasn't hurt. Uh, I got to say, that's, you know, it's a nice guy. Uh, and, and so, and most of the, there weren't a whole, you know, uh, army of women who came forward and said, oh yeah, he beat me and he beat me and he beat me. Nobody did. Only Amber Heard. So, I mean, uh, Johnny Depp was probably, I, I didn't think he'd be a nice guy. I mean, I figure he's a kook and he's a spoiled Hollywood guy. But no, he really was a much nicer guy than you would have, you would have imagined. And, and, and so he, was, he lost work because of these lies. And he deserved to get money out of it. And I really think, I think, it's, uh, I think it's a very profound verdict. And I think that we shouldn't just take the case as the trivial thing it was when it was going on. Because its result was profound. Anyway, I'm walking. I'm in the park today. I figured I'd take a walk, and it's very def difficult for me to walk lately. It's, and I don't think it's anything to do medically. I think it's just that I haven't walked so much in the last two years because of COVID and, and everything else. I mean, I, I was, for a while, I used to go out and, and walk every single day, you know, for a mile. And today I find going a half a mile is, is difficult for me. So uh, I'm, this gives me a chance to rest in the park and do something. Yeah. But anyway, we uh, we uh, have some. Oh, we have some friend. We have a friend in from from uh, Ak Akron, Ohio. I think Akron, Ohio. And uh, she's a old. Grew up with Marjorie, and she's just the most wonderful woman I know. I mean, not Marjorie, but Marjorie's wonderful too. But her friend Paula is just a gem okay and i can sit for hours and talk with her about politics and everything else and just really enjoy talking to her and so we yesterday uh, went all of us went to the theater marjorie had bought us tickets to go see company the stephen sondheim musical it was first done 50 years ago and this is a revival and it was wonderful just wonderful I mean, Sondheim was profound, but the staging of this thing and the performing of it, Patti Lapone was in it. There's a number in it that just, the last note she hits goes on forever. She was just marvelous, just marvelous. So we saw that, and it was, it was wonderful to be, to be back in the theater again.
and to see live performing and to see such a great show. I mean, just if anybody's coming to New York, you want to see a Broadway show, you can get tickets to company. I highly recommend it. You'll be talking about it for years. Okay. Well, I guess I should probably get back to walking, shouldn't I? I mean, I've taken up so much of your valuable time, and I thank you for taking so much of uh, uh, your time to watch it. I, you know, I really appreciate it, and I appreciate your following over the years. I see a lot of people popping up here. Uh, it says uh, Annie Claire, who watches a lot of the stuff we do. Uh, Len Lafrisco's watching. Uh, and it's, it's, it's nice to know that all those people are out there. And to all of you, it's a beautiful Sunday. Let me once again show you a Sunday in New York. Let me see here. If I, if I get up, I can show you. Um, I'm also lightheaded today, which is really strange. See this park? Isn't this a nice park? Look, here's a pond down here. Um, this is a pond. I have to be careful walking and shooting at the same time, because at my age, I have a tendency to fall. Oh, look at these flowers. Oh, man. Is that not beautiful? Uh, and uh, this, is the, uh, this is the pond. And uh, people and kids and everybody having a nice Sunday out here. There is nothing better than a day in which the temperature is right now, I think, 75 degrees, something like that. And it just kind of stays out that way. And it's really, really nice, pleasurable uh, place to be. And I'm going to try going home now, stumbling down the street as I go. Uh, but uh, I want to wish you all a happy Sunday. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye, everybody.